All right, so we're going to move on to our last topic from the first chapter for Calculus 4, um, which is extrema and critical points. So we're going to start by defining local and global extrema, and those are going to look exactly the way you expect them to look. We're going to talk about critical points, how to classify critical points in more than one variable, and, uh, and then we'll look at absolute max min values, right? Try to understand if you have, you know, if you're trying to find a global maximum, global minimum subject to some constraint, how do you figure that out? Um, things are a little bit more trickier than they are in one variable, but we'll, we'll deal with that when we come to it. Um, so, the first thing I, I want to start with is just a quick reminder from the last video. So we were talking, we were talking about directional derivatives, all right? So we said that the, the derivative of f in the direction of some vector u at a point a, b is just the gradient of f at a, b dotted with u. And we talked about the fact that, you know, this tells us that the, the gradient vector, right, when u is parallel to the gradient, we get sort of a maximum rate of change, uh, either maximum increase or decrease, depending on whether u is pointing in the same or the opposite direction uh, as the gradient. Um, and, and so we had that picture, right, we sort of looked at, uh, you know, we looked at this sort of example where we had a, we had a surface like this, right, and, and we're at some point on the surface, and we want to, you know, we want to calculate sort of the steepest path down. And the way to think about that is, well, somewhere, you know, you have your, somewhere down here, you have your xy plane, and so, you know, you have, you know, your, your points down here, and so this point on the, on the surface, that corresponds to some, some point down here in the, in the domain, and you can use the gradient vector to kind of calculate that, uh, that steepest descent direction, right? So the gradient is going to do this for you. Um, now, one of the, one of the questions that, that you could ask is, well, what if this is zero? Right? What happens if, if, if the gradient gives you the zero vector? Um, well, what does happen? Well, let's think about what happens in this case. So, so this came from something like, uh, I think we were doing something like this, right? Minus x squared minus 4y squared. So we calculate the gradient. So this is our function, f of xy. We said, what's the gradient look like? Well, the gradient is going to look like minus 2x minus 8y. And, and we can see where, where exactly the gradient is, is going to be 0. So we get the 0 vector at, well, we get it at the origin, OK? And all right, I know I, I didn't draw things as well as I should have here, because um, really the the origin should be like here. Okay, well, forgive me for that, hopefully. Um, then, then where does that point, that origin, where does it correspond to? Well, it corresponds to this point here, at the very top of our hill, if you like, right? Um, and so I guess there's a couple ways to, to think about this, right? One way to think about, well, if you're thinking about answering this direction of, you know, in, in which direction should I go in order for my function to increase most rapidly? Um, well, that, there's no answer to that question, right? Because you are at kind of the peak z value here. You can't make the function any bigger than you, you've got it, right? The biggest value you can get is 8 when x and y are both 0, right? So the which direction should I go to increase? Well, there is no such direction because you can't increase your function any further. You're at the maximum value for your function, all right? Um, so you can think about it that way, right? Uh, another way to think about it, if you're thinking in terms of increase, decrease, you think about change, the gradient's telling you how things are changing, right? Um, it's just like in one variable, you can think of, 
You can think of these, these points where the gradient vanishes, just like when the derivative vanishes in one variable. These are sort of like your, your stationary points, right, where nothing is happening. You're not moving, right? Um, so, so that's one way to think about it, is that you know, these, these are the points where your function is, is you know, for a brief moment in time, your function is not changing, right? And you see this a little bit even in, in Calc 1, right? Um, Okay, so we can see kind of in this, in this example here already, there's this connection between the gradient vanishing and, and, the, uh, and being at the very top, right, having sort of a maximum value. And you might guess that it's, it's true in general. Um, and, and it is, right? So you can, you can define, and maybe I'm not going to write down all the definitions because it's kind of time consuming to write them all down. Plus they're in the book, you know, and, um, right, so. So. So suppose you're given you're given some function f from some domain d, and we're working in well, we could do this sort of in general r n, right? Going from r n to r. Um, we do have to stick to real valued functions here, right? We've kind of, we've tried to be more general in some videos and talk about what happens if, you know, you're going from Rn to Rm, you have vector valued things. Um, well, you can't really talk about max and min values for something that's vector valued, right? How do you say that, you know, one vector is bigger than another? Well, maybe you can compare magnitudes, but what if you have two vectors of the same magnitude but different directions? Which one is bigger, right? Um, vectors aren't ordered. The real numbers are ordered, so you can talk about max and min values, right? Um, we do need a domain in this case because we want to be able to say things like, um, so let's say the value f of a, b, um, where a, b is a point in, in the domain. Uh, this is going to be a global maximum, let's underline that, global maximum. If, well, you can probably guess what, what, it, what the requirement is, right? It's a global max if f of xy is less than or equal to f of ab for every other point for all a, B, sorry, not A, B, X, Y. For all points X, Y in your domain, right? It's exactly what you would expect, right? And um, so that's global max, global minimum. Well, you know what a global minimum is going to be. You just turn the inequality around. Uh, what about local? So. Local max might be, and let me just kind of say, well, for, for again, I'm not even going to bother writing it out because these are all in the book. Um, the difference between a global maximum and a local maximum, it's just like it is in Calc 1, right, is, is that the global maximum is, is the biggest value you have on your, on your whole domain D. But you, you might have some other point, which is a local maximum in, in the sense that there's some open set u around that point uh, such that f of xy is, is less than or equal to the value you get at this point um, for every xy in u. So essentially for, for local versus global all you do is, is rather than working over the whole domain you would replace d with some small open set inside the domain and if, if that point is the biggest value you have on your, on your open set then you have a local max. Okay, um, so that's what it means to have a local maximum, and as you might guess, there's a there's a theorem that says if f has a local maximum or minimum at a point a b then well there's two possibilities 
One is the gradient of F at AB is, is zero, or the gradient of F at AB is undefined, right? Um, and just like in Calc 1, saying that the derivative is either zero or undefined means that you've got a critical point, okay? So critical point for a function of several variables is just a point where the derivative vanishes or is undefined. And here by derivative, of course, we mean gradient in this context, right? Um, the main thing that changes as you move up and, you know, from, from one variable to several variables is that you change what you mean by derivative. So in this case, derivative means gradient, right? So if you're trying to find, you know, you're looking for local maximum values for a function, just like in Calc 1, you look for the critical points. Finding the critical points, well, how do you find a critical point? Um, the critical points are going to be, right, well, you know, we're going to work mo mostly with nice functions, so critical points are going to be the places where the gradient is zero. So finding critical points is just like Calc 1. You take the derivative, which in this case is the gradient, you set it equal to zero, and you solve. Only this time, instead of solving just for x, we've got to solve for x and y, right? Um, and I guess I've, I've done everything here when n is equal to 2. Um, of course, if, uh, if n is 3, if we have a function of three variables, well, then the gradient has an x derivative and a y derivative and a z derivative in there, and we've got to solve for x, y, and z to figure out where the gradient is equal to 0, right? Um, so, of course, this can get a little bit more complicated, uh, especially because the components of your gradient, right, they might depend on both x and y. Um, so you may very well end up with a system of equations that you have to solve in order to figure out where the gradient is zero. And, you know, there's also no guarantee that that system is linear. So sometimes you have to be creative to solve and figure out where the gradient is zero. Um, we'll, look at, uh, we'll look at a few examples um, where, you know, we're going to keep the algebra pretty simple because we, we don't want to get carried away. Um, but we'll, we'll do some examples next to, to illustrate the idea.